Yeah, I mean, Chris and I always, we call it spanking. You know, we, it's, uh, you know, when we kind of abuse compression, you know, we spank the piss out of it. Um, so it just seemed to be a natural name. Although once I got the room set up, you know, it's more kind of like a tree house because I don't know if you can see out the windows, but there's trees outside my windows and it kind of feels like you're actually up in a tree. Um, but yeah, I couldn't call it the tree house. So yeah, Spank Studios. If you're going to crank it, you better spank it. I came to Miami in 1995. <clears throat> I was living in Los Angeles at the time. I got hired by Island Records to, to mix an album. Um, and it was the time when Chris Blackwell owned South Beach Studios. And the band that hired me uh, asked me if I would mix in Miami Beach because uh, they, they were an island band, Island Records band, and they would get a discount. So um, I'd never been to South Beach. And I said, sure, let's do it. So I came down. And I fell in love with the place. Um, it was in uh, the Marlin Hotel. It was called South Beach Studios. And it was just fabulous. And I really saw a niche. Um, I saw the opportunity for artists to come down and spend two weeks kind of really focusing on the mixing away from their girlfriends, away from the record companies, you know, away from their daily stuff. And also, I found uh, later in life, I found that it was also the, uh, like their only vacation because they spend so much time recording the album and then the mixing can be anticlimactic if they do it where they recorded it. And then the next thing you know, they go on tour. So I saw a little niche and the artists would come down and they loved it. They, had, they would have like a two week vacation. They would really be focused and, uh, and it worked out really well. So I worked at South Beach Studios for 20 years and uh, in, in 2015, they sold the building and the new owners didn't want to have anything to do with the studio. Um, so I purchased the console and uh, I brought it up to this room in my house. When I bought my house in 1999, I bought it from a, a, a Latin music producer, Kiki Santander. And, and this room actually, when I bought the house, was a control room. Um, he had like a, a pro control and it was a, a pro tools room, you know, uh, very basic. Um, and of course I tore it out. <laughs> And this was this was actually my game room. I had my pinball machines up in here um, because I had South Beach Studios, so I, I didn't really need this. Um, but over the past couple of years, I've had a plan in place um, because I saw the writing on the wall that it was going to be more cost effective, A, for me to have the studio at my house, and B, I was beginning to, 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 to I was allowing South Beach to start using, renting out the room at night so they could generate a little bit more income. And since... Aside from the console, the rest of the gear in the room was mine. I, I wasn't really keen on, on having cats coming in and pawing my gear. You know, not to mention that they, they weren't really using the console well. They'd spilled a lot of drinks into it, and, and, and there was an issue. So the writing was on the wall. So over the, maybe a year before South Beach closed, I'd already started to put the plan in place to getting this room prepared um, for it. And then, again, when it closed... Um, it was a, pretty much a six-week turnaround from the day South Beach closed to the day Spank Studios opened. Um, we did it, my brother Jeff and I, um, a, along with Ross Alexander, who, who re, uh, decommissioned and recommissioned the console, um, got it up and running. Um, the one thing that was key was since South Beach Studios was closing, I was able to take all the wiring. So this console, aside from, we, we had to take it apart right down to its frame uh, because it wouldn't fit. Um, so it was completely torn apart, cleaned, we recapped what needed to be recapped, really put, made the console new again, um, which was great because we didn't have to cut any wires. We pulled all that wires out, you know, intact and, and literally uh, it was plug and play. So I was very thankful about that. But yeah, I, I couldn't be happier. And uh, obviously I rebolstered it in this really sexy red, um, which I just love. I just love it. This console, I believe, was built in 93. South Beach Studios bought it from John King at John King Studios in New York. I believe they bought it in 1997. Um, and I'm the third owner. So I worked on this console. I've, I've worked on this console for the majority of its life. Um, it's a it's a SSL 4000G Plus. It's 64 frame with 72 inputs. So the last bucket of eight has eight stereo channels. And it is an ultimation console, which is 
uh, something that I've always really liked. It has the, uh, the moving fader automation, and I love it. So very happy to have an SSL in my house. Exactly. There's, there's no taxi meter, you know, so I, I mean, I find myself some nights if I can't sleep or I'll wake up in the middle of the night and have an idea and I'll just come up here and, and make it happen. You know, and it's, it's very weird. Like I'm still trying to find the balance between my work and my regular life because as, as of now, it's kind of like every waking moment is work, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, I'm so in love you know, I'm definitely having a love affair with Spank Studios. You know, I'm totally digging the freedom, the independence. Um, I'd like to say I should have done it years ago, but I'm happy I'd, I've done it at this point in my life. You know, so yeah, so so there is no issue with, with, with studio costs. And, and it allows me the freedom to, to, to do pretty much whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want. You know, and it also has opened up a whole nother, do no, whole nother door to artists who maybe felt they couldn't afford me. You know, now because I have my overhead is so low, I'm able to take on projects if I really like them that that normally I wouldn't have because it wouldn't have been cost effective. Can you make it so it looks like I have a third nipple?